Hello, this is Barbara Nicolato, Nick Snacks from Del Bello's Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to construct an underwater scene. For this project, I'm going to be using some multifarious cardstock and I'm going to cut it to an 8 by 8 inch. Three Lavinia stencils I'll be using. One is pebbles, this one is coral, and this one is laurel. Now, if you don't have all these three, look at what you do have and perhaps choose something to substitute that would fit into an underwater scene. As far as stamps go, I'm going to be using the two mermaids, Althea and Zealoth. This is 617 and this one is 616 by Lavinia. Fairy Orbs 377. I'll be using one of these fish from the fish set, Lavinia 621. I'll be using Lavinia 633, the mini fish. Seaweed 436. Sea Bubbles 439. Urchins 631. I'll also be using the Fairy Barnacle, which is number 423 from Lavinia. Seaweed number 2, which is 500. The single Zen grass, which is 334 from Lavinia. Willow, which is 173. These are two out of a set of four called Sea Creatures, which is Lavinia 470. And I'll be using the Water Spirit Verse, Lavinia 632. I will also be using uh, blending brushes and various different colors of inks from the Elements by Lavinia, the Ranger Distress Oxides, and the Versifying Clairs. Now, again, if you don't have the exact color and you have something that's close, test it out and that should probably work for you. For the Versifying Clair, I'll be using the Nocturne, the Shady Lane, Rainforest, Morning Mist, and Paradise. Again, this is all about blending inks to create that underwater background. That's why I'm using so many different colors. Squeeze Lemonade, Twisted Citron, Salvaged Patina, Cracked Pistachio, Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, chipped sapphire and wilted violet and then the lavinia elements inks i'll be using green sleeves pine olive russet orange and truffle i'll be using the sweet poppy stencil low tech tape this is seven eighths of an inch and it's going to actually just serve um, to keep a white border around the design and to keep it down. I'm going to be using a sheet of Masking Magic by Gina Kay to cover up some parts of the mermaid, of their, their tails in specific. I'm going to be using glitter pens, some white gel pens. I'm going to be using Wink of Stella in clear. Uh, I have some watercolor brushes and these little wells to hold some water for watercoloring, which we're going to do with the oxide inks. And then the other thing I should mention is um, stamping blocks to hold your stamps. Now, the background is what's going to make this particular creation. And we're going to do a lot of blending, and we're just going to take our time in laying down the background. So I'm starting with Squeeze Lemonade. It's a distressed oxide ink, and it's reactive with water. And uh, you'll see what that means and what we can do with that later. So I'm going to start laying down some of the yellow. I'm going to move to Twisted Citron. And my next color is going to be Salvaged Patina 
and I'm going to go over this green area, so blue and green is going to just make it a little greener there. Yeah. And then I'm going to come out with this blue. Going back to my green. And with that same brush, I'm going to put in a little cracked pistachio. Notice how my yellow area is smaller and the greener area has gotten a little bigger when I put the blue in. Peacock feathers. Well, I suppose I can cover this area later when I'm stamping. Bringing in some Mermaid Lagoon. And chipped sapphire is going to be the darkest of the blues that I'm going to use. And I'm going to make sure that the bottom part is darker. So that's chipped sapphire. And then I'm going to bring it up and blend it in with the other blues. Take a little wilted violet I'm going to be very light with this just to bring it around the corners a little bit. So this laurel stencil sort of gives me the idea of a lot of seaweed in the background and I start out with this especially in the lighter areas now I can move this and you got to be careful because some of these leaves will move like this one here and you have to be careful when you uh, when you use it with the stencil So right now I'm using the um, ci Twisted Citron, and I I'm not really getting a good stencil transfer because the color underneath is a little dark. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try and work with the Salvaged uh, Patina. And that's much more visible. I'm skipping around here and there. All right, next I'm going to be using the coral and I'm gonna have that coming up from the bottom. And I think I'm going to maybe go a little bit darker with the Mermaid Lagoon. Okay, I think that gives a good effect right there. Just wanted to use a little bit of these pebbles just to give the effect of a little bubbles underwater. Like so. 
And again, I'm just having fun moving this here and there to give that effect. And there we go. I'm going to uh, just throw these in a little dish of water. But that ink will come off without any problem. All right, next I'm going to put the stamps onto this image. And the mermaid Althea is going to go first. I'm going to peel this back a little because I want her tail to come off into this white area. So I'm going to ink her up really good with Nocturne. And since I'm not using a stamping block and I want this to take, I'm going to stand up and put some pressure over it. But when I place her, I'm going to make sure that, that the, the curve of her tail is on this paper that some of the fins of the end of the tail hang off. And I want her hand to be in this yellow area because she's going to be holding an orb and I want the orb to be glowing. I'm gonna be patient with this and I'm going to just let the ink get absorbed into the multifarious cardstock. I always keep Sharpies handy, too, because in the end, if some of this black doesn't transfer well, I can always go over it with the Sharpie. Actually, they came out pretty well. Now I'm going to have Zealous join her. So she's going to be swimming up. She's going to be very interested in what Althea is holding in her hand. I have the small orb, fairy orb, and I'm going to ink that up with Nocturne. And that is what I'm going to place. I'm going to lift the tape because I want it half on and half off. The colored picture. There. I think that gives it a little interest too. Uh, the medium, this comes with this set comes with three orbs. A larger medium and a small and this is the medium one and she's going to be holding it in her hand so I'm going to be careful the way I place it what I did before is I've taken the um, the Gina K uh, Masking Magic, and I stamped a couple of the stamps that I'm going to be using onto the Masking Magic, and then I took a scissor and I cut them out. And what I'm going to be using these is to mask, to cover an image that I'm going to stamp. You'll see why that happens in a as I start to uh, stamp other colors and make things look like they're overlapping. Now, this is going to be a little too big, I think. Yep, it's going to bump into uh, the tails. So I'm going to take off... I'm going to take the last urchin off... And I'm going to stamp that down. And I'm going to 
put some seaweed right here then so that didn't come out all the way. All right, let's pull out some of the other main players. I'm going to take this one particular fish from the fish set. And this fish is going to look like he's swimming into the picture. Then I have um, a small mini fish. And I think I'm going to make the next one in morning mist. So that's a little gray, gray black, and that's going to give the idea of this one swimming in the background. Not too much of a difference, actually. Just a small, very subtle little difference. Okay, now I'm going to be covering certain, I'm going to be covering certain stamps that I've stamped so that the plants and the barnacles that I put in are going to look like they're coming in behind. There you go. This will stick right on there. And I'm going to take that off. We'll cover his face here. I've got a tail here. We're going to be covering part of Zealoth's tail. An orb, a second orb up here, and the reason I'm going to cover one and not the other is because when I stamp the water, the seaweeds and the water plants, if I stamp over this fish, it'll look like it's in the background. When, I, when the plants get stamped over this fish that I just covered, he's going to come out on top. So he'll look like he's in front of the seaweed. All right, so I'm going to start with Willow. And these two are the two that come in the willow set. And yes, I know it's willow it could be used on trees, but we can really do a good job using these as underwater weeds and plants. And again, I, I'm not going to make them too long or too short. I can just move the stamps around, use the longer one, use the shorter one, and just vary the length of these. Swap this out for the longer one. I'm going to bring in the Paradise um, and I'm going to stamp these, which are the fairy barnacles. Now you see how I stamp some on the sea urchins? That's going to be fine because when I'm done and I peel this off, it's not going to... See, it looks like it's behind it. It's not covering up the urchin. And that's the point of masking. And one of the nice things about this stamp is that there's no right side up or right wrong side down. You could just turn it around and any of these can be the top or the bottom. Actually, while I have the blue out, I'm taking the single Zen grass, and I'm going to again use this as an underwater stamp, even though yeah, it's not usually what we use it for. This is seaweed, 
And I'm going to stamp that in the rainforest. So darker green. It's a permanent ink. And I'm going to put here and there and just fill in some empty areas. And lastly, for the plants, I'm going to take what's referred to as seaweed two. And they come in two pieces. And again, there's no real top or bottom. So, you know, you can put them this way, you can put them this way, one one way, one the other, and get all sorts of combinations with this particular stamp. So let me go with um, the pine Just to ch change up the shades of green. Uh, we'll have this come up behind. One, let's try the other one. And just this stamp set right here really gives you a lot of different types of seaweeds. Actually, I'm going to stamp the whole thing and put it up in here. All right, now I'm going to want some little bits in front of the urchins. And I'm going to change colors back to Shady Lane. Let's see if I put some of these at the top coming down. Now I'm going to use the Sea Bubbles stamp, and I'm just going to ink it up a little and put in some bubbles. And lastly, I'm going to take our little sea creatures, the seahorse, and ink him up real good. I'm going to stamp him right among the barnacles. And uh, the jellyfish in the same set as the seahorse. I'm gonna do a second generation stamp here. Stamp in over here. All right. I'm taking the Shady Lane and I'm gonna take the verse, the Water Spirit verse, and I'm going to ink it up real good, and I'm going to stamp it dark. The second looks like that, and the third generation looks like that. So I'm going to give it a third generation stamp right in here. Where did I put that color? Here we go. I don't want to be able to read it. I just want to give the effect that there is something written there about stormy seas and so on. So first generation, second generation, and we'll put the third right there. Yeah, very, very subtle, just like I wanted it. Now, the ink that I use, the Distress Oxide ink, is water reactive. So are the element inks. The Versafine Clairs are permanent. So when I I want to color in these mermaids, watercolor them, but I don't want the background color to affect the color that I want to do that mermaid. So what's what color is showing here? Well, it's the background distress oxide. Not a problem. We're going to get rid of that. Do you see how in here, when I stamped the Zen grass and the seaweed, how it goes behind the tail? It didn't go through the tail. That's why I used the mask. And these sea urchins show the same way. What else? Let's get rid of this mask. And one of these, um, the orb, and this particular orb. All right, now this orb I'm going to want yellow. This orb I'm going to make a little yellow. But as you can see, there's blue-green in it. So I'm going to take my brush and just dip it in plain water. 
and color over this with water. Let that soak for a little. I'm going to do the same thing with the spots on this fish. And you can see that most of the color washed right out. This one, Althea, is going to be in um, purple and blue color. And Zealoth on this side is going to be more of a green and yellow color. Let me do her fairy wings as well. I'm bleaching them out. All right, and the urchins are blue. I don't want them blue. And the same thing with the fairy barnacles. Now, I stamped these in VersaFine Clear, which is a permanent ink. It's not going to react with the water. But the color inside is my background, which is Distress Oxide. And that will lift with water. So I don't have to worry about the ink smearing. With the Zen grass, I'm going to try to whiten some of these little circles here. And maybe some of the hair, I wanna bleach out. Some of the yellow that's in the hair of the mermaids. All right, before I go any further, I'm going to take my, um, my heat tool and I'm going to make sure that all this is dry before I go any further. All right, that's pretty dry now. Um, I'm going to take my Wilted Violet and Mermaid Lagoon and I'm gonna use these Distress Oxides as watercolor. Now, you see these little drops in here? This is uh, from previous times that I've watercolored. Uh, it's difficult to take that pad and put it right onto this. With the elements, it's not a problem. It's very easy. And I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna trace down her body on the left and the right side, all the way down and around. And I'm also going to leave the middle uncolored because I'm going to use the wilted violet for that. So I'm going to try not to get my blue in the middle. This little purple on the winged area. I'm going to use squeeze lemonade and peacock feathers for the next mermaid, Zealous. I like to put a little on here and leave it because it dries and then next time when I just want a little bit of color for watercolor I'll just go into the lid drop some water on this and there's my watercolor. There we go. And where the yellow meets blue, there's even a little bit of a green area in there. Just wanna get the yellow a little bit Bolder, a little darker. The urchins. I'm going to be using um, green sleeves, truffle, russet orange, and some wilted violet. All right, let's start with. <clears throat> A 
the green sleeves. The green sleeves is like a yellow green. Here's what I like about the elements. The, yes, they are water uh, solvent, so we can use them like watercolor. But because of the shape, I'm able to actually tap the ink. Oops. Tap the ink onto the lid. And I like that because it just does a great job with the brush and the water and everything. Um, I think I'm going to also put a little bit of this around, not the center of the orbs, but right around in here. Okay. Let's go back to green sleeves, and I'm going to hit all these little urchins. I said I was going to put some seaweed right there to cover, and I forgot, so I'll go back and stamp that with some green when I'm finished. All right, so there's my green sleeves. Then I'm going to use a little bit of uh, the russet orange. A little bit of uh, wilted violet. Bit of truffle. And let's go to the orbs now. Um, I already put some green sleeve color on there. I'm going to do um, some squeeze lemonade and some pine. All right, so I'm going to have to do this in the middle. on the edges. All right, before I put finishing touches on this, I'm going to get that mm, seaweed stamp. Let's get that uh, rainforest. I'm going to put the little heat gun on here a little bit, make sure everything is nice and dry. I'll be right back. Okay, I know right now this looks like a big mess, but I'm going to carefully peel this low-tack tape off of this design. And it's starting to look a whole lot neater. I just have to clean my hands because I know the ink on my hands is going to end up on that white border. <laughs> just my luck. All right, now comes some of the fun finishing touches we're going to add. So I'm going to take the Wink of Stella, and this is clear, and I'm going to start applying it to a couple of areas, namely the bodies of the mermaids, their wings, and these orbs. All right, I'm putting some of this uh, shimmer effect that this Wink of Stella gives. Can you see that with this light? I'm not sure. All right, and then down the body. And don't forget, the Wink of Stella is liquid based. It's got like a water base to it. And of course, the water is going to further react and blend with the oxide ink, but it gives a beautiful, beautiful effect. So it makes the two colors shimmer together. It almost gives it like a, a 
a dragonfly wing effect or when you look at the shimmery scales of a fish. And can you see that? Beautiful. It's a really pretty effect. Next, I'm going to take my gel pens and I'm going to take the barnacles. I'm going to color in the middle and that's going to give it a little sparkle. And my gold, I'm going to do the spots on the fish. I mean, this gives it sort of like a neon glimmer to it. I bleached these out. This is a hybrid metallic color. I'm going to color these in with this blue pen. If you don't have this, just use the blue glitter pen. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to go over these little uh, dots, these little spots on the seaweed to further define the seaweed. And I think I'm going to also put some white streaks in the hair of the mermaids. Again, this is all the fine detail that you may wish to add or not, depending on your preference. I have a, uh, a fine tip jelly roll here in white and I'm just going to outline, actually I'm not outlining, I'm actually tracing some of the fine lines that are already on the seaweed stamp itself. I'm just switching to a, uh, a broader tip here on the pen so I don't have to color as much. Now, some people like to outline the mermaids and some things just to highlight them a little more, draw a little attention. I don't think we have to go too crazy with that. I'm going to draw it on the side where the light, this light would be shining on the mermaids. I'm going to call on my Sharpie and I'm actually going to make her hand a little wider so it looks like it's grasping the orb. There you go. That took care of that. I'm thinking the arm, this particular mermaid is a little light. I can see some little white areas in that black ink. Well, may as well do the other one too. And I want to outline some of these strands of hair again. Do this to your liking. If you don't like it, don't do it. I think the detail that has been designed into these stamps is just gorgeous. It's just, it just amazes me that somebody sat there and did all this. <laughs> this jellyfish needs a little help here. And... Let me do something, some Aletha's strands as well. Well, there we go. This is my design here, uh, underwater scene. I hope you've liked watching it. Our design team member, Robin Riley, has put out a video on how to make bubbles look like bubbles. And she does that using um, 
outlining them with some colored pencils, perhaps a green, a blue, a pink, a violet, putting a little white mark on them. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to add that to my design. And you'll see in the finished product what it would look like. So here's my finished scene. You can see how the bodies of the mermaids shimmer, as do the orbs. The little details, I put some white jelly roll pen just to accent a few things. So this is my finished Under the Sea Mermaids play. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please visit us at DelBellowsDesigns.com for most of your crafting needs. And if you haven't already done so, please join our two Facebook groups listed right here.